hi there my lovely friends i'm back on my channel on your request many of you have told me that you want my help for your preparation for subject specialization in english i've successfully passed the exam so i'll be helping you as much as possible so let's begin let me tell you that i've made a video which is a complete beginner's guide in case you are a first timer you can go through this video and acquaint yourself about the 10 domains of the exam that are included and that you'll be tested on second thing that i want to tell you uh, you know one of my viewers she appeared for the pedagogy exam and she told me that she's a native english speaker but she failed in the first exam because she said that uh, whatever she studied is different from what came in the exam so learn from her experience i'll give you a piece of advice if you think that you are a practicing english teacher and by just going through all the domains mentioned in the pedagog uh, in the subject specialization study guide for english you can make it happen it won't happen you need to refresh everything you need to go through each and every domain all the things mentioned all the concepts mentioned there only then you can pass so don't think that you are a practicing teacher and uh, you know everything practically and uh, with the preparation nominal preparation of one or two days you can make it happen it won't happen it would be a recipe of disaster you might fail in the exam so the best thing is to avoid yourself from the panic of reappearing in the exam as soon as you get your dates confirmed go through each and every domain and uh, prepare yourselves thoroughly no matter if it's part of speech or error correction or some um, everyday concept that you are teaching every day still you need to go through it uh, by that i mean uh, for example there is a section of the exam uh, where you are asked about all parts of speech so that doesn't mean that you have a nominal knowledge of what is a noun pronoun verb adverb you need to know all kinds of noun you need to know all kinds of verbs adverbs adjectives similarly uh, you need to know in detail about error correction uh, so what i mean to say is the bottom line is that don't think that you are teaching it every day so you can pass the exam because one of the viewers she emailed me and she told me that she is a native speaker but she admits that she failed in the exam so don't worry at all we are confident we think we are practicing teachers we will pass but this is something different this is very technical because for example there are theories about language acquisition when i did my masters in english literature i studied shakespeare and other things but i didn't study about theories of language acquisition at all so this exam includes a lot of concepts a lot of things which we haven't studied so that's why you need to go an extra mile to make special preparation to uh, pass the exam in the very first attempt okay so what are we waiting for let's dive into the video stick around with me till the end of video because i've explained it with the help of sample questions and i'll be uploading uh, videos daily let me know in the comment section below what else you need to know regarding your subject specialization exam and i'll definitely answer your question and one last request please i'm new on youtube i need a lot of support if thousand people watch a video they don't hit the like button very few generous people reciprocate me in the same way by hitting the like button i'm putting in a lot of effort by recording videos by collecting notes and making slideshows just a humble request please do click the like button do write some nice comments on my channel's wall because it's very important for my stability and growth on youtube i'll be very grateful to you for that so let's start the video it's called to solve test okay and you're going to have 125 questions that's a lot actually but uh, if you're trust me if you're nicely thoroughly prepared it's going to be as easy as abc and it's going to be a piece of cake for you the test duration is 2 hours but because the number of question is 125 uh, time seems to fly and 2 uh, 2 hours finish like anything and the format of question is mcqs there are multiple choice questions and uh, the test delivery is computer delivered it's not a handwritten test it's a computer delivered exam so you only have to choose the right options which makes it super easy so let's review what uh, weightage is given to each topic so your first section of question is going to be related to foundation of linguistics it's given 40% weightage and as i have successfully cleared the exam so i'll give you a tip that learn the phonetic chart completely you should be thorough with it which with each sound each symbol once you know that this then uh, grabbing uh, this much percentage is going to be a piece of cake for you the next section deals with foundation of language learning which is 20% but it's very very important to get passing percentage in each section for example this is 40% so your passing percentage should be 20% at least minimum 
similarly you should grab at least 10% uh, marks in this section because the total percentage is 20% out of it passing marks are half of it similarly the next section deals with language instruction and assessment so uh, the weightage is 40% so you must be prepared for this section as well because getting a passing percentage is very very important so half the mark half of the percentage is necessary to get an overall percentage okay so let's see what are the domains uh, of your exam uh, and what is the approximate percentage of the test and the uh, number of questions going to be asked based on that. So your first section of the exam is going to deal with Arabic transfer. Uh, its weightage is 8% and there are total uh, 10 questions which are going to be asked based on this. Next is assessment literacy. Again the percentage is 8% and 10 questions will be asked. Linguistics 16% and 20 questions will be asked. Error identification less percentage is given to that but trust me this is a very interesting section and very easy so you can easily score these 10 marks you can answer these 10 questions very very easily similarly I call these baby questions <laughs> if you are practicing English teacher then identifying parts of speech uh, it, it's not a big job it's not a, a big deal for you so you can easily score these 15 marks Next is CEFR knowledge and CEFR writing. These two are quite tricky. If you are a practicing teacher, uh, these two will be very, very easy for you. You need to prepare for this thoroughly. You need to prepare for this thoroughly. And if you are not a native Arabic speaker, then of course, this is the toughest part of the exam. But uh, I, how I prepared it, I'm going to make a complete video about it. Then trust me, you're easily going to clear this section as well. Okay. So... The toughest part is the Arabic transfer and you must be thoroughly prepared for assessment literacy as well as linguistics. The easiest part of the exam are error and identification and parts of speech because if you're a practicing teacher, this is not a, a big deal for you. Then comes the methods of teaching English. Uh, you need thorough preparation for this. Similarly, second language acquisition. What are the rules of second language acquisition and what are the problems related to communication for young learners these parts are the toughest part of the exams because you need to have thorough knowledge of these so these were the domains and I told you which domain needs more preparation which domain is easy for you so I hope it's going to help you in your exam preparation and this is the uh, number of questions shown here so you can easily know that how many questions are going to be asked according to each uh, particular content domain now let's see what this section of the exam is going to look like. It's called Arabic transfer. Uh, this section assesses the teacher's knowledge of how Arabic as a first language affects students who are trying to learn English. So basically it's about language transfer. Obviously students who have Arabic as their first language have a lot of language barriers when it comes to learning English as a second language. So this is a sample question. What might be the reason for an Arabic speaking student that she good teacher? You know that the helping verb is missing. She is a good teacher. But usually Arab students say she good teacher. So there are no perfect tenses in Arabic that are used after pronoun. In Arabic, the verb to be is not used with nouns. Or the verb to be in present tense in Arabic is used differently. And in Arabic, the verb to be is not used before an adjective. So uh, here the answer, the right answer is C. Uh, this question is given in the TESOL study guide for uh, subject specialization exam. As per that, C is option C is the right answer. I'm not giving this answer on my own. So you can check, double check and confirm from there. So uh, with the help of this question, we come to know that we need to have a thorough knowledge of the differences of language learning between Arabic and English. What are the rules of English language and what are the rules of Arabic language? So what are the basic differences? Because once you know the differences, then you can easily tackle this section of the paper. I'm going to make a separate video about it because if I discuss everything here, this video is going to be super long and you're going to get extremely tired. So uh, let's not dive into that right now. So let's see what this section of the exam is going to look like. It's called assessment literacy. In this section, 
uh, it assesses the teacher's knowledge of the principles of good assessment. You need to know what are the principles of a good assessment, including the purposes of testing. You need to know what are the reasons, the aims and purposes of testing. And you need to know that, uh, what is the criteria for test development and item construction uh, categorically. At the end of the course, let's review a sample question. At the end of the course, the teacher gave the students a test on what they had covered. This assessment is known as an achievement test or a progress test or a proficiency test or a placement test. Now you need to know categorically what are the differences between these tests because each aims to test a student for a different reason for a different purpose. Some tests are conducted in the beginning of the test, some tests are conducted throughout the term, some tests are conducted at the end of a term. So based on your knowledge of these tests, you'll be easily able to answer these questions. And according to the study guide given on the TLS website, the answer here is given uh, as A, which is achievement test. So I hope it helped you. I'm going to make a detailed video separately because uh, this video is just to familiarize you with all the domains of the subject specialization exam. So let's review this part of the exam which deals with foundation of linguistics and if you have done your masters in English literature just like me and you're clueless about uh, linguistics in detail then this you need a thorough preparation for this part. So let's review the topics. Uh, you should be able to demonstrate an understanding of the concepts related to grammar and syntax. I hope you already know about grammar. And uh, let's review what syntax is all about. Syntax is the order or arrangement of words and phrases to form proper sentences. So the most basic syntax follows a subject plus verb and direct object formula. That is, uh, let's review a sentence that Julian hit the ball. So syntax allow us to understand that we wouldn't write hit Julian the ball. We need to know where does the subject come in a sentence, where does the verb come in a sentence, where does a helping verb go in a sentence. So if you know the arrangement as per the function of each word, uh, then you'll not uh, make mistakes. So this is what grammar and syntax is all about. So the next part of the exam deals with semantics. In case you have no idea, uh, just like me, what semantics is all about. It's the study of the meaning in language. You need to know the meaning of the words in language uh, and what's the difference in meaning between two words. For example, it can be applied to an, an uh, entire text or single words. For example, destination, the word destination and last stop technically mean the same thing. But the students of semantics, they analyze the subtle shades of meaning that uh, the deeper meaning is analyzed in uh, the study of semantics. And the next part of the exam deals with, this section deals with phonetics and phonology. Uh, phonetics deal with the production of speech sounds by humans. And uh, phonology is all about the patterns of sounds, particularly different patterns of sounds in different languages or within each language. So if you see here, this is the, the International Phonetic Alphabet Chart. Uh, you need to memorize the chart nicely, thoroughly. If you have done that, then you won't, this uh, part of the exam is not going to be prob um, problematic for you at all. Uh, the next part of this section deals with language functions. There are uh, different functions of language, for example, instrumental. Uh, it's used to express people's needs or get things done or regulatory. The language is used to tell others what to do or inter uh, interactional. Language is used to make contact with others and form relationships. So there are different functions of language. Language is used for different functions for different aims and reasons. You need to be familiar with all the aims and reasons to answer this section of the paper. And uh, the next section of this part deals with conventions of written English and these include spelling, punctuation, capitalization, grammar and sentence structure and we got a lot of questions about uh, all these topics. So you must be thoroughly prepared about uh, the spellings uh, like there will be questions with wrong spellings and you will be able to in a sentence and you will be asked to identify the mistake. Uh, uh, choose the right option that where uh, where is the spelling mistake in the sentence and there will be questions related to punctuation so you need to be have a thorough knowledge of all the punctuation marks so that you can spot the mistake 
similarly there are questions there were questions about sentence structure so you need to have a thorough knowledge about that as well uh, next section of this uh, exam deals with rhetorical patterns and range of genres used in english written english so the rhetorical patterns are the ways of organization uh, organizing information uh, it refers to include the rule or principle used to classify items into groups for example writers can use particular types of rhetorical patterns to create personal essays such as narration or description or how to or comparison and contrast or cause and effect or classification and division or argumentation and persuasion these are all different rhetorical patterns that can be used for uh, written english so i hope i made it very clear that you need to be thorough with all these concepts uh, let's review a question uh, sec- uh, the sample question given in the study guide is which is the correct ipa transcription for the word fat so there are options given option a option b option c and d so if you are thorough with the uh, phonetic chart that is international phonetic alphabet chart then it's not going to be a problem for you and you'll be knowing that uh, the answer the correct answer is option a uh, this answer is also given in the study guide you can confirm from there as well so uh, i wish you the very best of luck this is the toughest part of the exam and you need to know every bit of uh, Uh, you know detail uh, you can prepare as much as possible to uh, go through this part of the exam successfully uh, so let's see that uh, what's the difference between phonetics and phonology uh, this is also included in linguistics section of the exam so phonetics deal with the production and transmission and uh, reception of all human speech sounds in general with no particular reference to any one language so this deals with how sound is produced whereas phonology deals with the ways those sounds are organized in a particular language so it's a sub category of phonetics so the first part is phonetics how the sound is produced and then it deals with the ways those sounds are organized in a particular language and uh, in case you don't know just like me because i have been a student of literature i i was never in touch with linguistics in detail so i just learned the phonetic chart <laughs> to prepare for the exam this is your uh, international phonetic alphabet chart you need to know about each sound each symbol so that you can answer uh, the linguistic part of the paper so you have to memorize the full chart So this part of the exam is going to deal with error identification as you can see that uh, it comes under the section foundations of language learning where the, you have to spot the role of the error in case you are a practicing english teacher this is going to be a piece of cake for you because you are already correcting your students mistakes 24/7 while correcting the assignments so let's review the sample question um identify the type of error made by the learner in the sentence below the sentence is given and the options are missing verb missing subject subject agreement uh, subject verb agreement or counts not count so uh, according to the answer key given in the study guide this is question number 6 and the uh, answer is a the verb is missing okay so you can review uh, this sample question and uh, prepare yourself accordingly uh you will be asked plenty of questions related to error correction next part of the exam deals with parts of speech this is the easiest of all trust me i call them baby questions because everybody is familiar with parts of speech so you can easily answer those questions this section assesses your ability to identify the different parts of a sentence whether it's a noun pronoun verb adverb or adjective or uh, conjunction interjection so it's a very easy part of the exam uh, let's review the question identify the grammatical structure or part of speech of the underlined words below so she really enjoys swimming at the beach but her sister don't but her sisters don't so you have to identify the grammatical structure or part of the speech of the underlined word the under, underlined word is here she so what's your answer as per the answer key it's a personal pronoun which is uh, your answer is a 
so you can have an idea that what sort of questions can be asked under this section different parts of speech will be underlined noun pronoun verb adverb adjective and uh, you'll be asked to identify them so i would advise you not only to learn uh, parts of speech but their kinds as well right because you can see here this is a one of the kinds of pronoun personal pronoun possessive pronoun indefinite pronoun or interrogative pronoun so similarly you should know what are the kinds of noun abstract noun collective noun proper noun common noun uh, adverb uh, adverb of time adverb of place adverb of manner similarly you should know the uh, kinds of conjunctions interjections so that you are able to answer uh, this part of the exam easily So this part of the exam deals with language instruction and assessment. A teacher should be able to demonstrate the understand, uh, understanding of concepts related to ESL teaching methodologies. So what are ESL teaching methodologies? There are different methods to teach English. For example, there is direct method, grammar translation method, the audio lingual method or structural approach, suggestopedia or total physical response and communicative language teaching or CLT. all these methods uh, are very important you should have in depth knowledge of these because we got questions related to th uh, these concepts these methods next part of the exam deals with processes and strategies to develop language skills uh, if you are a practicing teacher you are already familiar with the processes and strategies to develop skills for example you should encourage conversation you should model the syntactic structure you should maintain an eye contact you should uh, able to at you should be able to attend Uh, to the listening skills or incorporate a question of the day or compile a booklet of the students phrases so that you're keeping a track of uh, language transfer and you can maintain a check and balance and you can see what progress has been made and what progress needs to be done then of course you are practicing teacher that's why you are appearing for the exam so you are already familiar with lesson planning to achieve esl learning goals so how can you plan lesson effectively to achieve the esl learning goals particularly prepare for that and uh, if you have appeared for pedagogy exam that you or you are already familiar with assessment literacy different types of assessment such as formative assessment summative assessment types of test diagnostic test pre test in term test end of term test or uh, whatever then you have cefr knowledge common european framework of ranking uh, there is a separate section related to this and uh, you are going to get uh, you know plenty of questions so you should have uh, in depth knowledge uh, related to this section of the exam i'm going to discuss this in detail in the coming slide and the last part of this deals with assessing the student writing against cefr scale let me show you you know cefr knowledge it assesses your understanding of the basics of common european frame of uh, reference for languages okay uh, this is a sample question this is question number 8 it's already given in the study guide so how many total hours of study is usually estimated uh, a new learner will need to reach the cefr level b2 there are different levels i hope you know so according to the answer key this is your answer is uh, you know uh, option b actually i learned all these uh, <laughs> options i learned uh, the timing needed for each uh, rank but you know we never got a question related to that but we got some different questions so i learned a lesson that we should have in depth knowledge of cefr otherwise uh, sometimes you know you'll not get the questions in the study guides the questions you are going to get in the exam are totally going to be different so you must thoroughly so basically this section deals uh, it's called cefr writing and it assesses uh, the your ability to apply a rubric based on the cefr levels there are different levels i hope you know a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 uh, so what happens here that uh, you have to mark certain essays uh, given in this section so what are the instructions for this section uh, in this section you'll read some extracts from the essays and decide that what cefr level they are for example you can decide an essay is b2 or c1 make the best judgment you can you have to Uh, make your judgment based on your knowledge of cefr levels that is a1 a2 b1 b2 and so on 
If you feel an essay is midway between two bands that is B2 and C1, award it a half band that is B2 plus and you will be able to see the rubric on marking scale alongside each essay. So rubric is already given, uh, that's a good part so you don't need to memorize it. There are 15 essays and you have 20 minutes in this section. So you can go back and change your choice if you for an essay if you need to. So this is a, a sample, uh, you know, a descriptor for CER reference levels, okay. There is A1, A2, but uh, the slide was too short, I couldn't paste uh, all, so I pasted it from B1, B+, B2, B2+, C1, C2. So you need to go through all these descriptors thoroughly. If you really want to score well in this section, you need to go through each and every descriptor of each level extremely thoroughly. You have to have in-depth knowledge of of each descriptor uh, that what's the criteria of marking if you are giving somebody C1 so what's the level of accuracy fluency interaction and coherence in the essay similarly for B2 uh, each descriptor what does it say how are you supposed to mark the essay in if you have given it a thorough reading you've understood each and everything so only then you'll be able to pass in this section of the paper and the best thing is to go through it again and again. Obviously, your mind gets conditioned to know that this, uh, what is the range for C1, what's the range for C2, what's the difference. I would advise you mark the differences. What is the particular thing that you that makes you give the C2 to a, an essay? What's the particular difference between B2 and B1 that you have to give uh, a student B2 or B1? Once you've singled out the differences, it's not going to be difficult for you at all, but don't take it easy go through it again and again unless you have thorough knowledge of it okay so let's see uh, what the section of teaching methods is all about this section assesses the teacher's knowledge and understanding of teaching methods which are particularly related to English as a second language for example this teacher asks uh, learners to look at a picture in a book and guess what the story will be about. The teacher is using a dash strategy. Is it a top-down method? Is it a bottom-up method? Is it a close reading method? Or is it a think aloud method? So this is question number 10 from the, uh, from the study guide given on TLS website. And as per that, uh, your answer is option A that is the top down strategy or the top down method. Uh, I'll be making separate videos related to all the methods related to uh, teaching English that is direct method, total physical response method or suggestopedia or many other. I've already discussed them in the previous slide but we need to have in-depth uh, knowledge of all the current methods, the new methods as well as the old uh, practices, traditional teaching practices because question, questions can be asked from anywhere. So this section of the exam deals with second language acquisition. It assesses the teacher's knowledge and understanding of the principles of second language. Uh, there are different theories related to the principles of second language acquisition. Uh, for example, there is a very famous one, Stephen Krashen's theory. It says language acquisition doesn't require extensive use of conscious grammatical rules and doesn't require tedious drill. Or there is Noam Chomsky's theory based on the idea that all languages contain similar structures, rules, a universal grammar and the fact that children everywhere acquire the language same way. You can go through the de these theories in detail and there are many others. So the, we got questions related to this. I remember I got questions related to this as well. So there is a sample question as well that evaluate the following statement. Second languages are primarily learned through imitation and as per the answer key, the answer is false. So if you have read these theories in detail, you will be able to answer similar questions uh, quite easily. Okay, this is the last section of the paper which deals with young learners and this section assesses the teacher's knowledge and understanding to issues which are particularly related to young language learners. Remember, you have to find information about issues related to young language learners. Uh, there is a little descriptor that I attached in, your, in the slide for you. So what are the problems encountered by very young learners, young learners, and late young learners? So as it says here, young learners, let's review some of them. There is low concentration span or a wide variety of activities are needed, that's why. Uh, there is a short memory span, so frequent revision is needed, uh, logical analytics 
analytic analytical you can ask a lot of questions and problem sharing in group work they are uh, developing confidence in expressing themselves developing world knowledge limited motor skills and reasonable amount of input so you can uh, go through this in detail to prepare for uh, this section of the exam this is just an overview that i wanted to give you so that was all from my side the video is already too long i won't say much this is just an introduction for the first timers to acquaint themselves that what the exam is all about now i've decided that i'll be uploading a separate video related to each section every day uh, drop your comments uh, and let me know what are the things that you want to know about the subject specialization exam and i'll try to answer your questions i'll do I'll try to help by making videos about them. Please, I put in a lot of effort just in return. I just need, uh, uh, I want you to hit the like button. It matters a lot and um, drop some good comments as well uh, in the form of your constructive feedback and become a permanent subscriber. Best of luck for your exam. I'll see you in my next video.